reduce the dimension of your problem and often make it solvable and then use kind of asymptotic methods to say, well, what happens if I start to introduce asymmetry or something like that? Okay. So what's this fundamental solution good for? Okay. Well, it's good for essentially constructing fundamental solutions of the Poisson equation, okay? Also, remember that we, we just solved the Laplace equation on the unbounded domain, but there'll be ways essentially to stitch things together. Sorry, we solved it on an unbounded domain. There'll be ways to stitch things together on bounded domains in order to make that um, fundamental solution work for us in that case as well. And we'll talk about that more when we get to um, Green's functions, okay? Well, let's talk about Poisson's equation. Sometimes it's written without this minus sign here, but um, uh, for some historic and sort of physical relevance reasons, we'll write it with, with a minus sign out front. So let's consider um, this PDE, right? We're still gonna work on the unbounded domain. And we're going to assume um, essentially that F is in the set C0, uh, 2, okay? Where essentially at C2, Rn, okay, with um, compact support so that when we, when we integrate the fundamental solution against it, um, it doesn't, doesn't blow up, okay? I'm going to call this equation star, and then I'm going to write a theorem. And the theorem says that u of x is equal to, and I'm going to use this convolution notation, phi convolved with f is equal to um, the integral over Rn phi of x minus y, f of y, Satisfies the uh, star. Okay. I should remind you quite a bit of the fundamental solution of the heat equation because actually, in the limit of the inhomogeneous uh, uh, solution of the heat equation, if you uh, use the Hamel's principle or something like that, you should recover this, right? So that could be one way to prove it if we already had that result, okay? Uh, but we're gonna use a, a slightly different method to um, look at the way that we are gonna deal with this singularity, okay? So what are some things of note, right? So as I said, this is analogous to the heat equation um, solution, okay? Remember the heat equation solution, right? That was uh, telling us something about how the initial condition gets smoothed out over time, okay? Um, but using uh, the Hamel's principle for the heat equation, um, you could also get you know the response to forcing, and you would get a similar sort of con convolution, okay? So how do we get this? Essentially, we translate, multiply, and sum uh, our phi function here, okay? Um, but note that this is not harmonic, okay? Why is that? Essentially because phi of x minus y is not harmonic at x equals y, okay? So now this is an issue that we didn't encounter in the case of the heat equation, because remember our, our singularity lived at the initial condition. At the initial condition, you don't really assume that the initial condition has to satisfy your PDE ever in time dependent um, problems, right? It's only once you step off of the initial condition. So once you step off the initial condition in the heat equation, you get rid of that singularity, right? 
But remember here, this singularity lives in the space where we want the, the PDE to be, um, to have a solution, right? Um, so it's only a problem at a point in the case of Laplace's equation, right? This is not a, you know, not going to be a, uh, a fundamental solution to Laplace's equation um, anywhere. And we wouldn't want it to be because we want it to be a fundamental solution to, to Poisson's equation here. Okay. But that's just a remark to remind you that we're taking the sing singularity and we're moving it all over the place, essentially by shifting and then integrating over it. Okay. The Laplacian acting on um, phi with respect to x, right? This is a delta distribution, okay? And uh, and yeah, so I mean that's that's essentially something I've already harped on, okay? So you can think of this that when we when we take this Laplacian here we're going to get back a delta distribution because of the singularity there. And so the idea is that if I take the Laplacian of this, right, well, it'll be like a negative delta distribution. I should be, sorry, up here. I should be convolving a delta distribution with F and then I should recover my right-hand side. So that's basically what we're going to show, okay? So first of all, um, in, in the proof, let me start by changing variables. U of x is equal to the integral over Rn. I'm just going to swap as I, as I can do with any convolution where the x minus y is and where the, the y is. Okay. And so if I then take the Laplacian. What I get back is the integral over uh, Rn uh, phi of y, and that doesn't get hit by the Laplacian now. Just f now gets hit by this Laplacian. Okay. Um, and furthermore, okay, using another change of variables, I can essentially say that that's the same as taking the y Laplacian of f, right? And, um, and uh, pa yeah, so passing the, the Laplacian onto the, onto the y variable instead, okay? So what I'd like to do now is integrate by parts. Okay, but remember phi has a singularity at uh, the origin, right? So what am I gonna do about that, okay? Well, if you remember what we did in the case of the heat equation, we essentially just separated the domain into two parts, right? One part where we cut out the singularity and then shrunk that space down to nothing except where the singularity is. And then the rest of the space, which is basically just Rn with a hole cut out, okay? So in order to compute this integral now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna separate it out into the region where the singularity is and everywhere else, okay? So we're gonna cut out the singularity Okay, using a little ball, B zero epsilon, epsilon is gonna be small, right? Um, and uh, the next page of my notes. Let me draw this. <clears throat> so a little ball here, right? 
This is B zero E here. Okay. And then this is this whole region all around here, right? This is this is my total Rn, but I'm gonna call this region that lives out here, I'll just call it UE, just to have something to call it when I write down integrals and stuff. Okay. So B zero E. This is going to be a, an open ball at origin with radius epsilon. Okay. And then u sub epsilon is going to be Rn with the ball removed. Okay. And then, as you would imagine, right? Now we're talking about bounded domains. Start thinking about, you know, what what theorem should I expect to to pop up if I have integrals over bounded domains involving Laplacian? Probably something involving, you know, greens, the word greens or the the word divergence, right? That sh that should tr trigger some idea of how to move forward with these integrals, right? So let's just see how everything gets broken up here, okay? I'm going to, um, let's see, is that a typo or not? Yeah. Yeah, it's a typo. Okay. Just the part on the ball. And I have the part outside of the ball. Okay. Let's just write them separately. Okay. 